don't know how many people are this way, but I, I definitely have a problem where I get really, really angry when I get confused. Sometimes to the point of going into a rage. Now, luckily I've never hurt anyone. It's never been the type of violent against someone type of rage, but man, just some of the stupid things I've done, some some road rage-ish kind of stuff too that I that I, I am not proud of at all. God, so much cringe, so much. Sometimes when I'm in a scenario that I know that I can't, I, I just know for a fact, if, if I go into a rage at this point, you know, it's, it's going to give me problems. Hey, I could probably even end up in jail if I allow myself to go into that mode. So sometimes when I get very confused, I'll just shut down. You know, I, I, I'll lose my speech center. I, I won't be able to do much of anything. You know, it lasts anywhere between a minute and maybe 15 minutes. Just just completely useless. It's done. It just, I just shut down. And uh, it's always scary when it's happening because I, I get worried, well, what if I never come out of this, you know? But lately I've been just, I've... I've been getting angry really, really easily. And a lot of it is because of letting a lot of this political stuff build up, you know? Just in awe of how Republicans are defending their position against police just because they're not pushing their agenda or narrative anymore with this. You know, you, you, you guys talk about all these principles you have and then something changes, one element changes and suddenly you, you don't have those principles anymore. And I'm just like, well, how does this work? You claim that you, you, you give, give all this support to them, but, you know, it's, it's like as soon as, like, if they started um, supporting Antifa and support, you know, really, really going out of their way to support BLM, and when uh, and when there are KKK marches that happen, instead of the police protecting the KKK members, it would be all about protecting the you know the counter protesters or the you know the everyone else. Yeah, you, the right would be throwing a fit. You know, as soon as as soon as the police are not promoting the right wing kind of values. You know, they, it's, 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 you know, as far as Republicans go, concern, well, they're done. They're, they're, they're no longer, you know, they no longer have as much worth. It just seems that so many right-wingers, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about everyone, but I don't know how to discuss this without making generalizations. You know, some people are like, oh, no, no, never make generalizations. What should I do? Make a two-hour, two-hour video? So, but, you know, it seems that, so many people on the right here in the United States, Republicans, I should say, because the right is, is often, you know, what you might consider the actual right or whatever, sometimes verges a little bit from the Republican Party, but they don't, they never show that publicly. It's always, oh, full, full on support because the right has to stand together. That's how they do things. That's, that's another thing. It's just like, oh, no, no, don't make, don't make these generalizations about the right. And I'm saying, why? You guys always stand together. You stand together on all this stuff. Well, well, I feel differently about this. Okay, that's fine. What about the rest of the party? What about all the, the people saying that we should punish Liz Cheney because she dared to, to defy the, you know, I mean, come on. Do, do you see Democrats trying to punish, uh, you know, people like AOC, Ilhan Omar, do, do, do you see them trying to punish them just because they're different than, than the, the standard uh, neoliberal Democrats that are in office? Oh, no, we have to shame them for being on the left. We have to shame them for having different principles. No, you don't see that 
of course, you also don't see enough people on the left criticize some things that probably should be criticized. So, I, you know, don't get me wrong there. People talking past each other constantly because people don't want to listen to, you know, many people on the left and the right don't want to view the actual results of what they promote. They just don't want to look at it. And so both sides are talking past each other. Oftentimes, the things that the left says about, you know, most of the time, the, the things that the left says about the right are true. And, and, and I'd say the same about the, what the right says about the left are true. Now, not always. And there's, there's always, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's always going to be people making ridiculous declarations and maybe some people even feel that the things that i've said in some of my videos are ridiculous declarations about the right maybe you're right you know i'm from a perspective i've been hurt by a lot of things i've especially been hurt by religion really really badly and i see how badly religion affects other people in the lgbt community and you know it, it's it's hard not to be biased and I'm, I'm going to have the bias. I, I guess I, I, you know, it's, it's impossible to get completely get rid of bias. You can, you can, I can try to work on it, but it's, it's never going to completely go away, you know, especially when I still see religion hurting so many people. But, you know, as long as police are you know, enforcing traditional American values, you know, because we're we're apparently supposed to be so proud of our our traditional values in this country, right? We're we're supposed to be so proud of our traditions. You know, so as long as police are are upholding those types of traditions, then apparently we should be all waving the the thin blue line flag, right? You know, police can be as ruthless as they want. As long as they're enforcing those kinds of values, you know, all is well. We should be thankful to have such righteous, God-fearing, authoritarian figures to, to be frightful of. It should give us comfort because America, America, America. And as long as you're a God-fearing individual, you should have no fear. You should have no fear of the police. You should have no fear of God because, you know, God is on your side as long as you think and operate the way that he dictates. Yes, police officers' jobs are hard. So instead of just accepting that their jobs are hard, apparently we should trade our liberties for police officers' comfort. I mean, after all, since when did a little fear ever hurt anyone? People should be fearful if they're the wrong type of people, if you know what I mean. You should be living a different lifestyle. But, you know, heaven forbid you're not allowed to drive a car that spews black smoke for blocks, you know. Heaven forbid you can't drive that around. And, you know, to this sort of mindset, any police officer that would actually stop you for, for p being a pollutant, um, you know, is, is no longer really commendable, right? Because... You know, they're, they're being wrongfully authoritarian at that point. And if that sort of thing is being enforced, that means the system is corrupt now, right? Or maybe not corrupt, but it's, it's, it's authoritarian communism, right? Your liberty is being destroyed by communism because you can't, you know, drive a car that, that's polluting all over the place. Look out, it's left-wingers wrongfully trying to control your life with that horrible science stuff, right? You know, but apparently, you know, when police try to meet a ticket quota on the freeway, making everyone on that freeway scared in the way they're driving because, you know, they, they don't know how ticket-happy those officers are being, you know, having a whole bunch of them all the way down. You know, we better drive absolutely perfect, oh no! Because they could get you for going four over the speed limit, right? Hell, they, they could make something up. They could say, oh, well, look, our, 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 our radar said you were going this fast. And it, it might even be within the error that, the, that those things normally have. But they could just do it anyway because they don't like the way your car looks. 
And so when people see that sort of thing on the side, they're, they're not only, wor- I mean, they're not only worried just, of, just about just the element of being pulled over, but everything that comes with that. You know, is their life going to be threatened because they didn't do something the right way? Especially if they're of a particular demographic that uh, police seem to judge as being more crime-worthy just by virtue of being that demographic, right? But I suppose, you know, someone feeling that their life is threatened is okay, right? (laughs) It's just roughening people up a bit. They need it once in a while. It builds character. Rough. I said, please don't be too nice. Just comply. It doesn't matter if you didn't do anything wrong. Just comply and the nightmare will eventually be over. (laughs) Or will it? Well, just comply anyway, no matter what they want you to do. You know, but apparently there's there's no issue regarding authority. And, And we don't have too many laws, apparently. People just need to follow the laws more, right? Yeah, where are the Republicans calling to end the war on drugs? Crickets, right? Crickets. Where, you know, where's, where's that, uh, that, that, all of them caring so much about our liberties, right? And body autonomy, right? I mean, yep, yep, some of you are upset at just how much you're being pressured into, into getting the vaccine. And then you're just absolutely outraged at the notion that you might not be able to travel you know, on airlines and such, uh, without proof of getting the vaccine and such. You're just, oh, so outraged, right? Because, you know, body autonomy. But these same people never, never argue for body autonomy in in any other situation. Not with, you know, a woman's right to her own body. Someone having the right to put in their body what they want. No, 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 they they want control of that, all that sort of thing. But yet they want to say that their principles are about body autonomy makes as much sense as calling your position pro-life when it's only pro-life of the fetus and once they're born you know just just abandon them it doesn't matter anymore they only matter when they're unborn i grow tired of how actually unprincipled so many republicans are you know yet they constantly talk about how principled they are and it's just like well you don't seem to carry it out very far do you but to be fair the democrats aren't very principled either but they usually don't brag about having principles, so. But you know, it'd be really nice if the Democrats were a little bit more principled and actually to the left instead of just being neoliberals, but, you know. We, we, neither party really stands for, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, neither, neither party really stands for the people anymore. I mean, no matter how many alternate parties we have, there's probably going to only be two that end up being in the forefront. And so the two that we need in the forefront need to be different. They need to be standing up for, for the people. Right now, the, both parties are all about power and greed. And everything's shitty about what a government can be. But, you know, apparently we should be proud to have beat the rest of the world when it comes to having the highest percentage of our population in prison. You know, it it reflects how we actually think that freedom and liberty are so important, right? Perhaps if we say USA, 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 if we say that enough times over and over again and declare that we find freedom and liberty to be the most important, it will just magically change this country into something else, into being a a shining beacon of, of liberty, freedom, and hope, and prosperity. Yeah, apparently it's it's all about being a country of faith. Faith that it's the most exceptional nation in the history of civilization, rather than reality. Now, this is a great country, but I mean some people just it's it's like it's 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 next to godliness. It's just so weird. It's it's freaky. It's it's creepy. It's creepy. It's like North Korea kind of creepy. And you're just like all with it. Patriot prayer. One nation under God. We're so blessed to have one nation under God. It's creepy. You know, and, and if you question people's faith that way, you know, they, they, they take it more personally than if you make fun of their religion. Their, their stated religion. You know, and if we teach 
young children this type of stuff. Oh, we're the most exceptional nation in the history of civilization, and we're we're a beacon of of prosperity and hope and and freedom and liberty and all that stuff. You you teach that to the kids from an early age. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna look at it the same way that that kids do religion when you teach them those religious values from an early age. It's it's the same sort of thing. And somehow we're supp- I, I, we're everyone's supposed to view that as a positive thing. Hell, I I think it's weird just to have a pledge to the flag at all. That that's weird. You know, and and people just don't even question it. And if you do question, well, yeah, you're anti-American. It's just like, no, I'm not anti-American. I just don't think we should put like religion and nationalism together like that. It's just terrible. It's a terrible combination. I mean, some of I, this reminds me a bit of how, uh, you know, people living in Israel look at at Israel. You know, there's there's a there's a religious uh, kind of uh, thing going on there, I mean, probably even more than here. You know, especially since they're surround they're they're a small country surrounded by pretty much enemies. So that doesn't excuse how they treat some of the people on the border, but, uh, man, wouldn't it have been nice had, like, had Israel have been, like, in a different part of the world, and they didn't, they weren't surrounded by Muslims, right? It'd be nice, but that, that's not what's happened. I, I guess I'm, I'm going on and on, so... But this video is going on and on, so it, and it's kind of cathartic to get this out of my system. So, so yeah, I mean, I suppose if you're religious, you know, it's very comforting to think that this is one nation under God, that this is that this country is praised by God, right? But but for anyone else, yeah, it, it's creepy. It's kind of disturbing. Sorry, guys, but yeah, I mean. Republicans are really showing their true colors when it comes to how they feel about the police. You know, back the rights agenda or else. You know, back Trump supporters or else. Back the people who falsely call themselves patriots or else. Back the KKK members marching and not the counter protesters or else. Or else, you know, they'll lose support from the right. But. The left has on their side mainstream media, Hollywood, universities, and then, of course, big tech, right? They've got all that on their side. You could say they're, they're you know, joined at, you know, joining hands or whatever, right? But the right wing has law enforcement and the military, and those things are pretty fucking powerful. It just seems, you know, and this is another thing that just has me so, I'm just like, just, how? How can you be comfortable with this? How can you be comfortable having this kind of mindset? Just, ugh. It just seems that freedom for a lot of these Republicans that I'm talking about is the ability for people, uh, yeah, especially the, the majority demographic, the most powerful demographic, to be as mean and cruel as they want. I mean, provided they're not being, you know, physically violent. Well, you know, I guess... It's different when it comes to the insurrection. They, they, they change their principles all over the place there. But, but you know, they, they think people should be able to be as mean and cruel as they want and that, they, that people should be able to be as greedy as they want. No limits on any of those things. Now, I mean, I can understand why some people are a little worried because there are some people on the left who make it sound like if, if you accidentally commit a microaggression you've just done something terrible you just hurt someone over a over something stupid right so uh, what hurts someone or someone being mean to someone you know there's there's some area there that that makes it kind of messed up because of what some really crazy people on the left are pushing Okay, I'm sorry, you can't, if you're going to start declaring that, that a, a microaggression just really, just absolutely traumatized you, you know, that's, that's on you. That's on you. You know, you can't, you especially, especially can't punish people for microaggressions. Ridiculous, ridiculous. 
if we get to that point, it would be essentially like living in the uh, uh, demolition man reality. You know, you, you get a ticket for saying the wrong words, right? And you, you must say everything just so... I, I, if you haven't seen that movie, go watch the movie Demolition Man and you'll know what I'm talking about. Or just look at clips of it and, and how people had to act, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not for that. I, I, I don't think we should have to live that way, right? But I also don't think it should be acceptable for people to go out of their way to try to be as mean and nasty to someone as possible. You know? I mean, I'm not saying someone should see jail time or tickets for it or anything, but there should at least... We should shame people who do that sort of thing, you know? That, that to me, is an appropriate uh, reason to shame. And to a lot of these people who push this notion that we should be able to be as mean and greedy as we want, will say, well, I go out of my way to make sure I'm not being mean to people. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't help the fact that you think others should be able to be. Oh, well, I, I don't like it when, when people are mean like that. That's bad. Well, you don't seem, to, I, I don't see you calling it out when, when this sort of thing goes on anymore. I don't see people on the right calling out when other people on the right have have been mean. They're just usually. I mean, it's like Rush Limbaugh. Look how mean that guy was. What what was that thing that he 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 had this? It was this recurring show where he would celebrate the deaths of people who died of HIV of, of AIDS. You know. Now, I mean, I, I'll give him credit. He at some point later, you know, apologized for that, which which is cool. But you know, that kind of thing is something that. People on the right generally don't call out. You don't call it out. You know, the right wing, you know, tends to push this notion that there's no such thing as being too verbally mean. And uh, the left has this idea that uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity for their side. Well, as long as you got people talking about it, that's that makes it okay. That you know, that that makes it uh, worthy because it will will be fighting for our cause. And it's just like, no, it's it's performative, and you don't you don't care if it even it, it takes people away from what you're trying to do. God, what was that quote? Or someone someone gave a quote recently. Let me let me see here. Um, of course, I kind of doubt I'll be able to find it quickly. Okay, here's 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 the quote. Let me let me move this to a different tab so I can at least read it. Um, Thomas Sowell said, "Activism is a way for useless people to feel important, even if the consequences of their activism are counterproductive for those they claim to be helping and damaging the fabric of society as a whole." Now, I don't like that quote. Uh, one part about that quote because it just sort of suggests that all activism is that way and it's not not all activism is that way i i've i've described some things that that my friends and i have tried to do to you know like go to that 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 planning meeting and ask specific questions to 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 stump the uh the speaker you know getting people to to question what what was going on there you know there are types of activism that work really well but most people don't want to put the thought into it. Most people just want to be able to go through some motions and, and be congratulated on going through those motions. And it's not helping. Uh, someone named Andrew McIntosh said, For a lot of people, activism is not activism. It's performance. The purpose is to make them feel good about themselves and not actually changing things for the better for others. Yes. Yes. I think that was well said. Yeah. But uh, I guess I don't know what more to say. It feels good getting this off my chest. And we'll see how much hate I get from it now. So thanks for watching.